Hey guys, this time around the question comes from Jenkins. Thank you, Jenkins. And the question is, how can people be so selfish? And I get it, right? You're trying to grow, you're trying to be better, and as a result, you notice when people aren't. And I think part of what we see when we see somebody being goofy at the grocery store, hoarding stuff, cutting in line, those kinds of things, when you see a me monkey kind of post on social media or whatever it is, maybe part of what we see, I can speak for myself, maybe part of what we see is an older version of ourselves and we want to reach out, right? We want to fix it. That's noble. It's kind. I get that. But I think more than that, there's a deeper piece of good news here because right now, we are called upon to be incredibly selfless in a way that we haven't in generations, perhaps. We are called upon to put other people first, to think about the big picture, the greater good, in ways that we just haven't in a long time. And by and large, here's the thing I want you to know. Yeah, there's lots of rough spots, but by and large, we're doing it. This is really good. And so as people are thinking about selflessness, thinking about common good in a way that they haven't. Of course we notice the me monkey stuff. Of course we notice the selfishness stuff because it throws it into sharp relief. And so that means that there's actually real growth happening here. So the fact that you're noticing more selfish behavior is in a funny kind of way, kind of encouraging. So be encouraged. That's the part of the lesson here. But I want you to know something else. I'm not here to explain selfishness to you because here's the basic thing. This is a life lesson. It applies to all kinds of things in our relationships. You ready? You cannot rationalize irrational behavior. Think about how many arguments that you've had, how many frustrations you've had with other people because you were trying to understand something that's not a head thing at all. It's a heart thing. People do things because of what's in their heart and they don't always makes sense. Maybe part of the lesson is to step back and go, you know what, I'm not going to try to own this intellectually. I'm not trying to justify this. I'm just going to love my way through it. Feel your way instead of thinking your way through it. And you can go a long way. That's the, the first lesson at the surface of all of this. But I want to go a little bit further and say, on the other hand, goofy behavior, whatever it is, is internally consistent. In other words, you pick a paradigm. For example, you say that the world is this way. It's probably internally consistent. All of the rules inside of it make sense. In the same way that someone who really thinks that they're Napoleon, <laughs> everything that they say and do and think makes sense inside of that. But if you challenge them from the outside and go, you know, he died a long time ago. You're in for an argument, right? You're in for some weird behavior and some challenges. This is like that. Because here's the thing I want you to know. Self-centeredness, selfishness, egotism, whatever you want to call it, is not rational. It is not externally consistent. It doesn't apply to the outside world. You can create a rule set for yourself that you're the center of your universe and all that, but it just doesn't really work for the outside world. In the same way that if you decide that you're Napoleon, you're going to run into problems when you meet other people. This is like that. Because here's the thing, it's great to have an internally consistent worldview, but right now especially, we are called upon to think about things in the context of other people. So that selfish idea, internally consistent, doesn't work with the outside world. And when you have a paradigm that just doesn't work with the outside world, you got two choices. You can either open up and go, wait a minute, maybe there's a bigger way to think about all of this. Maybe there's deeper lessons. Maybe there's other people in the world. Or you can shut down and really, just really lock in on that idea. Really try to impose your will on other people. Really try to force it to be the way that it isn't. And you've seen this behavior. We see it institutionally sometimes, but we see it a lot. When a person is challenged in their selfishness, they get even more demonstrative, even bigger in their behavior. And if you want to escalate it, if you want to make it worse, get in their face. Don't try this at home, right? You know exactly what I'm talking about. The key to ethics. It's just a simple understanding that you are not the only person in the world, right? That's how this works. I know that it's easy to read half of, a, of an abundance book, 
you know, a, a positive prosperity kind of spirituality kind of book, and there's a lot of them, and a lot of them are great. But it's easy to read half of it and go, oh, in a universe of abundance, everybody's entitled to theirs, and so I'm not going to worry about other people. I'm just in it for me, and I'm going to spend my whole journey thinking about my healing and my prosperity and my demonstration and my, my, right? That kind of an idea. But I want you to know that that is a misuse and a misunderstanding of the idea. Think about it. Every hero you ever had who demonstrates some kind of a connection with absolutes, with infinity, for example. Every one of them has the idea of we're all in this together in one way or another. Exactly zero spiritual heroes, or any kind of heroes for that matter, exactly zero heroes go, me first. So right away you know that that idea of abundance means just me just doesn't actually apply. Because here's the thing, there's no you as you. You don't exist all by yourself in a vacuum. You know yourself through your relationships with other people, through where you've been and your adventures and what you've learned together and the power of tribe and community and all of that. There's no you as you. There's just us. And when you open up to that idea that, that I'm not the only person in the world, all of a sudden you become better at being a person. Now look, you know because you're a smart person that there is no actual shortage of food, of shaman, of whatever. You know that there's no shortage of it. There's a run on it because a bunch of people have a goofy idea about where stuff comes from. And that's a great lesson about the power of the wrong paradigm, right? If you have the wrong idea, you can do things that really impact your life. Ideas and feelings, very powerful. So watch yours. But this is also a great lesson because the apple cart, quite literally, because people can't find apples sometimes, the apple cart has been upset. So we have an opportunity to take advantage of this reboot to think about what's really important. We win this thing by working with each other, by putting the concept of us first. Okay, so what do we do about people being selfish? if we're not supposed to get in their face because we know that makes it worse. And how do you get in somebody's face from six feet away anyway? The answer is to be open to the challenge of saying, you know what, I'm going to learn from this. I'm gonna keep the idea of us and us means that guy acting like a jerk too. So be open to the challenge on the one hand and here we go, model serenity and blessing on the other. What if, what if this could all be okay? What if, just like we all have the power to make things worse, to screw up the grocery store, to do the wrong thing and make this thing take a lot longer than it needs to take and all of that, just like we have the power to do that, what if we have the power to make it okay? And okay starts with you and me just deciding to model serenity. What can you do to look at the people around you and go, you know what, we got work to do, but it's okay. That's the lesson. How can people be so selfish? I don't know, Jenkins. How can you be selfless? That's the question. Thanks for keeping those questions coming. You can do that by emailing me, by, by posting on Instagram or Twitter with the hashtag AskDieter by, you know how to get a hold of me. But do me a favor and like and share and subscribe and all of that good stuff because wonderful things are coming in and I can't wait to answer the next questions you have. You got this.